Hi, I'm Tiffany Roberts, a recent college graduate, and this is the latest episode of Millennial Myths, a podcast dedicated to debunking the most common political myths among young Americans through a combination of on-the-street interviews, personal stories, expert analysis, and much more. This week, we're going to talk about media bias. We decided to do a little experiment ahead of our discussion. We collected a variety of news headlines. Some come from major media networks, while others are from satire news sites. I put them side by side and asked people on the street which one they think is satire and which one they think is real. You may be surprised at how hard it was for them to tell the difference. Take a listen. Los Angeles bans travel to Alabama due to abortion law, or B, U.S. abortions hit record low. Which one is not real? Yeah, the first one's not real. The first one's not real. First one's not real. Uh, probably the first one. So for the first one, the headline that is not real is U.S. abortions hit record low. Okay, second question. Which headline is not real? Kim Jong-un wants Pope to visit North Korea, or B, Kim Jong-un has higher approval rating among Republicans than Pelosi? Second one. First one. The first one. Oh, uh, second one. Which one's not real? Yeah. The first one. I think the second one is real. Actually, the headline that is not real is the first one. Kim Jong-un wants Pope to visit North Korea. For the third one, Trump vows to cut foreign aid to California, or B, families earning $117,000 now qualify as low income in California's Bay Area. Which one is not real? The first one is not real. The second one's not real. The second one is not real. First one's not real. First one's not real. Um, The headline that is not real is Trump vows to cut foreign aid to California. Don't go too far, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, Heritage's Rob Bluey will join me to debunk the common millennial myths on media bias. Overwhelmed by the 24-7 news cycle? Looking for a way to keep up with the news that matters? The Daily Signal podcast brings you the top news of the day, plus interviews with lawmakers, authors, Heritage Foundation experts, and more on the most important policy debates in America today. If you're a conservative who wants to be on top of the news, check out the Daily Signal podcast, available every weekday morning. I'm now joined by Rob Bluey, Vice President of Communications at the Heritage Foundation and the Executive Editor of the Daily Signal. Rob, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be with you. So my first question, what do you think makes a reporter or news outlet fair or unbiased? Wow. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a long time uh, going back to the history of journalism when you can look at the change that occurred. I mean, we had a period of time when news organizations and reporters really just wore their bias on their sleeve. I mean, they were upfront about it. Everybody acknowledged that there was a certain bias that they brought to their coverage of the news. Or frankly, publications would support one political party or one ideology over another. And then there became a time when I think media consolidated. Uh, People started to talk about objectivity in news and reporters really strive to be fair and balanced. But at the end of the day, let's face it, everybody does have their biases and is subjective in terms of how either they select the stories they cover or how they cover those stories. And so I really think it's evolved over time in terms of how journalism has taken shape. And we happen to be living in a time today when because of the internet, almost anybody can be a journalist. I mean, you have people out there who are covering either local communities and using the internet and social media to get news and information to interested people. And you have uh, national politics, which is what we focus on here at The Daily Signal and the policy debates that are shaping Washington. And I think what we've seen is an explosion of people who've wanted to come and do this kind of work. And as a result of that, it just looks very different probably than it did a generation ago. Do you think Americans trust the media? Well, no. The polls show (laughs) overwhelmingly they don't trust the media. Uh, The media has become more fractured. So you have a situation where... uh, In the days of Walter Cronkite or Tom Brokaw, Peter Jennings, I mean, people got their news from the evening newscast. And uh, the evening newscast, by the way, got its news from the New York Times and Washington Post. So everything was very much in alignment. And you uh, you know, would leave the evening newscast. And generally, all Americans would have a sense of what Walter Cronkite had said and would be operating from the same set of beliefs. I'm not saying that was a good model. I'm just saying that it's very different from where we are today. Now, you can customize the news to your liking. I mean, if you only want to subscribe to the Daily Signal, and that's the news that you want to consume, that's what you'll do. Um, that's your choice as a consumer. You don't have to turn into uh, the uh, 
the evening news. You don't have to subscribe to the local paper. If a local paper even exists, let's face it, local news has been decimated uh, by the, some of these changes in the media landscape. And so uh, there's a whole different uh, shape that the media has taken today. And frankly, social media has contributed a lot to that because there are what we call filter bubbles where people just only consume the news that they're interested in, particularly when it comes to politics. So as individuals, do we have any power to stand up to this bias in the media? Yes, I think so. Because first of all, you control, you have so many sources that you can turn to. I mean, podcasts are a great example of that. This particular show or some of the other shows like Heritage Explains or the Daily Signal podcast, uh, videos on YouTube. I mean, there's so many different options where consumers can turn to get their news. My one advice, though, to listeners is to make sure that you are consuming a healthy diet of news. Don't just consume conservative news. Uh, you know, try to make sure that you have a balanced diet, just as you would have a balanced diet in terms of what your your own nutrition, in terms of what you're you're taking into your body. Make sure that your mind is consuming a variety of sources. Uh, some of that may be liberal sources that you disagree with personally, but it's good to hear that other perspective. And so that's why one of the reasons that the Heritage Foundation, we make it a priority to put Heritage Foundation experts on MSNBC and CNN and other outlets beyond Fox News. And as a young adult, it seems like I can get really stuck in social media. So do you think that as young people that we should get out of that kind of bubble of social media and start to watch like TV news or... I, I, th- I think it's really important, yes, to have a, a diversity of sources as well. I think social media can do a lot to help uh, filter the news and deliver it in a way that is perhaps a little bit more consumable. Um, I'm somebody who still has the, the morning paper delivered to my house. And so I start my day getting the Washington Post in the driveway and opening up the paper, seeing what's on the front page and you know seeing what's on the local section and, uh, and also trying to consume some of the local news in, in Northern Virginia. And so I think that... Um, Social media can be great because it's a quick and easy way to get the news. But yes, there are there tend to be other ways that you can do it. I personally am not so much a consumer of TV news. Um, I, I was as a, as growing up. I mean, in my household, we watched the evening news, the local news at six p.m. and the evening news at six thirty p.m. And uh, to this day, my parents uh, you know still enjoy doing that. But that just is not necessarily how I consume news. Uh, I tend to be somebody who likes to have email newsletters delivered. So I think there's any number of ways that you can go about diversifying your news diet. That's all I have. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much and appreciate you doing the show and exposing some of the myths and uh, getting to the bottom of this. Of course, thanks. (laughs) That's it for this week's episode of Millennial Myths. In the meantime, please subscribe and share with hashtag Millennial Myths. And please leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. See you next week. Millennial Myths is brought to you by more than half a million members of the Heritage Foundation. It's executive produced by Tiffany Roberts with support from Michelle Cordero, Lauren Evans, Valia Rampersad, and Mark Guiney. For more information, visit heritage.org.